हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू सेकंड लेक्चर इन द सीरीज ऑफ ज्योग्राफी एनसीईआरटी कोर्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी यूनिट टू द अर्थ स्पेसिफिकली चैप्टर टू द ओरिजिन एंड इवोल्यूशन ऑफ अर्थ पार्ट ए द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव्स ऑफ दिस लेक्चर आर अर्ली थ्योरीज ऑफ इवोल्यूशन ऑफ अर्थ इन विच वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट नेबुलर हाइपोथीसिस प्लानिटिसमल थ्योरी टाइडल हाइपोथीसिस बाइनरी स्टार थ्योरीज एंड इंटरस्टेलर डस्ट हाइपोथीसिस and we will discuss modern theories as well in which we will discuss about big bang theory which is the most acceptable theory behind evolution of earth evolution of earth is a mystery there are various mythological stories behind it but our book discuss about various scientific theories which we will discuss part by part in this lecture in the earlier lecture we have discussed chapter 1 that is geography as a discipline which answers the questions such as what is geography what is the importance of geography why should we study geography how should we study geography what is physical geography and what is the importance and relevance of physical geography to watch that lecture you can click on the i button on the top right corner of your screen and watch that lecture so without wasting time let's begin with the first hypothesis that is nebular hypothesis before going on to nebular hypothesis one must know what is nebula a nebula is a giant cloud of dust and gas in space a nebula is born out of two various processes first process is a supernova a supernova is a explosion caused due to collapsing of a star a dying of a star produces a explosion in the space which is known as supernova and whenever there is a ex explosion dust and gas is thrown out and this forms a cloud which is known as nebula another type of nebula is those nebula which are giving birth to a new star and hence are known as star nurseries so basically it can be due to dying star it can be due to a new forming forming star both has relevance with nebula before understanding nebula hypothesis again one must know one more theory that is gaseous mass theory by immanuel kant what is this gaseous mass theory this is again a theory behind evolution of earth given by immanuel kant it is based on newtonian principle of principle of gravitation newtonian law of gravitation according to kant hard particles of supernaturally created matter collided with one another due to gravitational interaction that is we have shown with the help of an animation down there you can see that and resulting of as a resultant of this gravitational attraction and collision the there is an increase in temperature and angular velocity of this cold hard mass and which directly indirectly converted into a nebula nebula means giant cloud of dust and gas which has high temperature and an angular velocity that is rotation thus under the influence of centrifugal force the nebula started rotating and under the influence of this rotational or centrifugal force the mat matter according to their density was thrown out to form different rings which condensed into planets these different rings were thrown out and were con condensed in the form of planets as you can see in the bottom animation and similarly the these planets also rotated in the same way and this led to the formation of moons or satellites and this whole system is today basically known as solar system to us now what were the failures of the kant's theory what he could not explain the first thing is this hypothesis is against mathematical law what is the mathematical law kant assumed that mutual collision will result into rotation which is against the law of conservation of momentum as we have studied in class 9 physics that law of conservation of momentum applies when two bodies collide and hence it does not create a rotational phenomenon always do two bodies collide so one if they are both the bodies are moving in a straight line then the moment will again be in a straight line only it will not change the direction of the rotation second theory is kant could not explain the origin of primary matter he already presumed that primary matter was being created supernaturally so that was second criticism of kant and the third criticism of the kant theory was kant did not explain the source of energy to cause random movement he told that the hard particles which are supernaturally originated randomly moved and got attracted towards each other but he could not explain the energy behind what what initiated that this, this random movement because if they are already present in the new universe and they are the forces 
acting upon them are balanced, then the movement cannot happen. So he failed to explain what is the energy behind this random movement. Because Newtonian law of inertia says that a body in motion will always remain in motion and body at rest will always remain in rest unless any external force applies to it. And what is the source of this external force is unexplained by Kant. So here comes our hero that is Laplace. He proposes another theory that is nebular hypothesis, which is basically based on gaseous mass theories of Kant. He, but he assumed that primary matter existed in the form of nebula itself. He, did, he didn't got in the questions that how the primary matter came from, how rotation happened. He presumed that the nebula existed forever and the hot and rotating gas mass was the primary matter that existed in the space. That is nebula and due to centrifugal force, the gaseous mass took shape of spheres and started accumulating near the equator and thus, then subsequently got separated under the influence of centrifugal force in the form of rings and the same process as told by Kant earlier. The evolution of solid earth from originally gaseous and later liquid mass is apparently supported by solid crust and a liquid interior. That is, the, this theory has been believed until 200 years back and but it is still criticized on various points it has been appreciated but it's criticized on following points such as he did not describe the source of original nebula the same thing problem with Kant he did not explain the source of primary hard matter and here he is not able to describe the source of nebula itself second Laplace does not discuss how a separated ring developed into a planet ring separate separated from the rotating mass because of centrifugal force but how these rings converted into solid planet or a sphere a ring converting into a sphere has not been discuss discussed by Laplace the hypothesis does not explain the direction of rotation of several planets and moons of the solar system and it could not explain why only nine planet came into existence why not more so here nebular hypothesis of Laplace fails now coming on to next theory that is planetesimal theory by Campbell and Moulton. In this theory, another star passed by sun and drew up material and later condensed into planet. That is already sun was present. A third star came and it drew off some material from the sun and these, this material later on condensed in the form of planet as you can see in the animation. So this is a simple theory that is known as planetesimal theory. Later. Another theory came into picture that is tidal hypothesis by James Jeans and Jeffries. This theory talks about in distant past, a big star approached sun so very near that it caused tides to rise from the sun and these tides became so great and infinitely and finally under the gravitational influence of the star, the tidal mass shot off the shot off and later condensed into planet. Let's understand with the help of an animation. This is our sun. A third star came into picture and because of the gravitational influence of the star, the material of sun got pulled towards the star because it was a, a strong gravitational pull of the star which is known as sun tides and this tide became so high in height that when the star came nearer and nearer, it got shot off means it got separated from the sun. And later on in the period of time, this particular tidal material was organized into number of planets that we see at present. So this is one theory that is known as tidal hypothesis. The next one is binary star theory by Russell and Lytton. In this theory, at some point in the past, there was another star called as compound star apart from sun. And both the sun and the compound star revolved around the same center due to and due to an accident a third star appeared to come closer to the compound star as it was far from the sun it does not affect it but cause tidal action on the compound star the planets must have been formed by this tidal matter let's understand with the help of an animation there are two stars that is sun and compound star both these rotated around us uh, around a single uh, revolved around a single point and a third star came into picture because of this third star and sun the compound star start started having tidal activities and because of this tidal activities the compound star broke into a tidal mass and this tidal mass later on condensed into number of planets and finally the third star went away 
and the these planets started rotating around the earth so this is tied the this is the binary star theory by russell and litton next is interstellar dust hypothesis in this hypothesis a lot of dust particle existed in space around 6 billion years ago this dust particle was attracted by sun and began to revolve around sun initially the dust particle randomly revolved around the sun in different orbits leading to an elastic collision due to which their speed decreased and the particle united to form small planetesimals which later produced large planets that means there were lot of lots and lots of dust particle which attracted towards the sun and this these dust particles collided with each other and they got collide because of this collision they got attached with each other forming a new body that is planetesimals and number of planetesimals means smaller smaller bodies joined together condensed together because of gravitational pull because of uh, inelastic collisions and because of these collisions they started assimilating into a single body known as planets next theory that is a modern theory which is known as big bang theory till the, till now what we have studied are all those theories which start which explain the origin of earth and our solar system but from this point of time the geographers and the astronomers started thinking on a bigger question that how universe originated and here comes into picture another theory that is big bang theory there was one person that known as george lemaitre he said that the big bang is how astronomers explain the way the universe began it is the idea that the universe began began as a single point then expanded and stretched to grow as large as it is now this theory was proposed by george lemaitre so what basically it talks about let's see with the help of an animation stage 1 in the beginning all the matter forming the universe existed in one place in the form of a tiny ball known as singularity point or singular item which with an unimaginable small volume and infinite temperature and infinite density basically as you can see on the screen there is a black ball or black uh, tiny ball which is known as singularity point this singularity point was the only thing which existed in the space at one moment of time and this singularity point acted or behaved as a black hole black hole we all know black hole has infinite gravitational pull and which absorbs all the things which comes in in the near vicinity of the black hole and all the things which comes in the near vicinity of that singularity singularity point also behaved in the same way it absorbed all the mass and energy coming in the near vicinity and because of this its density increased infinitely and because of density increasing infinitely and volume remaining constant volume remaining very small its temperature started shooting off and at a point that is 13.7 billion years ago it exploded because of this unstable condition unstable condition you can imagine if you are filling a balloon with air and air again and again you are filling it with air and volume has be, is been limited and you are increasing pressure and building pressure is building inside the balloon so what will happen the balloon will explode and the same thing happened with this point also we are filling it and filling it and we are not letting the volume to expand more and hence the this particular mass that is known as singularity point exploded this explosion is known as big bang which happened 13.7 billion years ago after the explosion for about some period of time that is around 3.5 to 4 billion years there was radiations all around the space what is radiation radiation is fast moving neutrons fast moving electrons and protons that is gamma alpha beta radiations and these radiations these fast moving neutron fast moving proton fast moving electron somehow got stabilized and started the formation of first matters that is known as helium and hydrogen first helium developed and from helium then hydrogen developed so this was stage 2 of the whole principle that is at the big bang the tiny ball exploded violently this led to a huge expansion it is now generally accepted that the event of big bang took place 13.7 billion years ago from the present the expansion continues even to the present day as it grew some energy was converted into matter as we told that helium was made from the energy radiations then this but there was particularly rapid expansion within fraction of second after the big bang thereafter the expansion has slowed down within the first 3 minutes from the big bang event the first item begin to form 
and this led to the these items led to the formation of helium and hydrogen and helium and hydrogen further with the uh, capability of the permutation and combination we see that if we combine the atomic uh, numbers of helium and hydrogen we can get the complete atom uh, periodic table that we studied at present study at present so with the combination of helium hydrogen number of elements were formed and number of elements were basically uh, formed a, a cloud a cloud of dust which is known as nebula at present to us and these particular nebula were the starting point of galaxies and stars and after the forming of galaxies and stars still the universe is expanding still the exp expansion between the galaxies is there galaxies are moving away and away from each other and at present also as we talk galaxies are moving apart from each other but the same thing does not apply within a galaxy within a galaxy there are forces of gravitation that are pulling towards each other means stars and stars inside the galaxy are contracting but the galaxies as a whole are moving away why the galaxies are moving away the basic principle is because of the explosion there was a rapid discharge of energy and because of this energy there was a force with which these particles were moving and still at present the force of this particular uh, explosion is greater than the gravitational pull between these bodies and hence it could not contract it is still expanding so this will form the basis of our next lecture so please remember this phenomenon what were the evidences of big bang the first evidences came from edwin hubble edwin hubble uh, with his telescope proved that expanding universe theory was proved that universe is still expanding galaxies are moving away from each other that was proved by edwin hubble which is also known as expanding universe theory that is the first evidence of big bang theory that galaxies are moving apart said by george lamentier second is microwave background very early in its history the whole universe was very hot as it expanded this heat left behind a glow that fills the entire universe at present the big bang theory not only predicts that this glow should exist but th that it should be visible as microwaves part of electromagnetic spectrum so this electromagnetic spectrum has still been observed so indirectly directly it proves that the big bang theory talks about something solid means it has some factual basis next is mixture of elements as the universe expanded and cooled down some of the elements that we see today were created the big bang theory predicts how much of each element should have been created made in the early universe and what we see in very distant galaxy in an old star is just right means there are many elements created and these elements also uh, gives a proof that big bang theory was a truth but then too there are many other astronomers many other geographers which challenge the theory that the universe is not expanding one one theory comes from thomas gold and herman baudi which says that steady state theory steady state theory means universe is steady that is not even contracting not even it is expanding the second theory comes from pulsating universe theory from ellen sandija so this theory talks about that initially for some years the universe will expand then again it will contract to a small point then again there will be a big bang and it, it will again expand so it is pulsating universe first it will expand then it will contract and then it will again expand by a big bang so these are various theories behind the big bang theory behind the evolution of earth which one is true which one is not true is not the question at present the most acceptable acceptable theory at present till date is big bang theory why we are calling it as a theory because it is not on factual it is not like newtonian laws which is which can be proved by mathematical calculation it is just a theory which can be proved wrong if in future by some other theory which comes into picture and if, if it, it has got some factual basis so at present we have big bang theory as an evidence as a only theory which explain all the phenomena of evolution of earth so that's all with today's lecture you can follow sculpt academy on facebook instagram and youtube in the next lecture we are going to discuss the origin and evolution of earth part b in which we will discuss about various theories of evolution of earth various theories of evolution of 
तो यू कैन से दैट लिथोस्फियर एस्मोस्फियर ओरिजिन ऑफ लाइफ ओरिजिन ऑफ स्टार्स ओरिजिन ऑफ मून सच थ्योरीज विल बी डिस्कस्ड इन सेकेंड लेक्चर दैट इज पार्ट बी ऑफ दिस चैप्टर प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल सो दैट other people's other serious aspirants other serious students like you can also get access to such beautiful lectures till then stay home stay safe study online thank you